What's happening? Still here at Zoom Ed and having a great time. And today we're hanging out with Ashley, of course. How you doing, Ash? Doing good. You? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic because we're about to go inside the famed Zoom Ed greenhouse and see what kind of animals they have for us here. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Kenner. Awesome, awesome. I already see someone that looks incredibly beautiful right here and it's, you have some amazing greens, don't you? Yeah. You guys love your green iguanas, huh? We do, this but, is Gus. Okay. And uh, Gus is the orange one and he's a male. All right. He's a, he's a green iguana, but he's a red iguana. I understand, so he's a red, I know what you're saying, iguana. a red green iguana, yeah. <laughs> see, I'm colorblind, but I can see the beauty of him now. Now you did tip me off because this Gus is kind of temperamental to men. Gus, uh, Gus is a really good friend of mine. And okay. so he doesn't always like it uh, when guys are around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is he um, jealous? The jealous type, I, I guess. I think he might be a little bit jealous. Yeah, actually, he met Jim and decided right away that he didn't like Jim very much, and wow. uh, eventually really showed Jim how much he didn't like him. In what way? Um, he bit his arm. Oh, uh, Jim was uh, not paying attention, which you always have to do when you're working with animals. One moment of looking the wrong way, and Gus came down and just got him right in the arm. Yeah, and what most people don't realize is large green iguanas are actually quite a formidable animal, you know. I mean, we have them feral in Florida, and they get to be about six foot long. And just because you're a herbivore doesn't mean you can't defend yourself. So it's right. very, very important. They're great, great animals. They do get large, and you do have to be certain... Some males do, as you say, even in breeding season, can sure. sometimes be more aggressive. So Yeah, probably. and I think he had just become mature and just kind of okay. figured that out. And we dominant, weren't really so. aware yet that that was happening. And um, he let us know right away. Yeah. So I don't let guys go uh, any closer than this okay. to Gus anymore. I'll tell you um, what, I'll listen to you. <laughs> I, I, you know, no need to mess with you, Gus. You look good, dude. He's getting up there. It's so funny. He's climbed up. He wants to be above us and he wants to show us this is my area. So it's these are the kind of things you have to learn right. about the reptiles. You know, reptiles will give you visual cues. Uh, they don't bark. They don't do anything like that, but they give you visual cues. And who's the young lady here? This is Chabella uh -huh. and she's a green iguana. She's been with us for about six years. And now she's she's a pretty nice girl. She looks beautiful, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's good looking. Well, yeah. we have to do some uh, yeah. changing of the... I see you using the repti bark. I love the way this looks, actually. This is my favorite substrate you guys make. Yeah. It's just nice. It looks like a forest floor bedding. It's, mm -hmm. it's really cool. Yeah, and she'll they will breed, and so she'll want to nest in here. We wow. tried to give her a box, but she'll nest wherever she wants to, and she likes to dig around in it, and it's easy to clean up. Cool. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, let's see what you're going to... So, what, what do we do with this? Well, this is their old food right um, and what I'm gonna do actually is feed it to my worm farm <laughs> let's <laughs> investigate check it out that's awesome so I'm gonna just you know kind of spread it in here and in here we're we're farming some that's really cool, red man. worms if you kind of oh yeah yeah, you know, yeah look, look. if you want to get dirty you guys I don't mind getting dirty yeah you guys remember my uh, if you guys go back and watch the Chinese box turtle video you'll see I actually have a little worm farm myself uh, and this is simple to do, you know, and yep. this is a great way if you want to expand You can start growing your own food for your animals and I always recommend that whether it be plants or worms Pretty cool. And All this right. is some new Fresh food. iguana food and we just use the Zoomed pellets and some greens some fruits um, Vegetables yeah. What's that? Is this some of the... That is the canned red banana Awesome. The, fruit, the uh, tropical fruit mix-ins and sure. They love it. They love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they all look happy and they got nice color. All right, well, after you because oh, I'm sure they're you. waiting for their food. <laughs> yeah. You got to you got to see this guy, man. This is incredible. Look at how beautiful that is. Now, I don't care how common a green iguana is. Um, they're still a majestic animal, you know. And I still get psyched seeing a real good representation of the species. And she's a pretty gal herself. Cool. All right. Well, we haven't even scratched the surface. Who is in here? These are our banana iguanas. They're spiny tail. Uh, some tinosaur. Mm-hmm. All right. 
they're uh, Tinosaur pectinata. They're the yellow variety. Okay, yeah. And so they're in their little heated oh, houses yeah, right these now. These are awesome. I love them. Yeah. So this is a female. Whoa. She's a oh, little wow. squirrely. She is squirrely, yeah. She's Calm a down, baby. Good You're job. Okay. Good job. Hey, hon. It's the hat. Chicks either dig or hate the hat. <laughs> May I um, try? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's just gently put her on here. There you go. Oh, that's nice. Oh, she's nice and warm. She's got she's a heater in there good. that she's sitting in. And they, they're actually really good. They put themselves away at night into uh -huh. the heated houses. Pretty and then smart, they can huh? come out during the day and yeah. bask. And That's really cool. Um, and, and so, you know, these, these are spiny tail iguanas. These are from Central America. Um, and you can see the spiny tail. Isn't that pretty? But, but this is a morph, right? I mean, I guess this is a... It's is a it, naturally occurring. It's a occurring. naturally occurring one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. The, there's one that's black and white. This one, we call it a banana because it's yellow. Right. Gotcha. But, um, really yeah, beautiful. And look at the habitat these guys have. You have supplemental lighting and heating for some of those kind of, what do they call it? The June gloom, I remember from being in California with a marine layer. Yes. It, it, it takes a while to burn off. So that's, yeah. you guys have really done an incredible job. And really here. where we're at, it does stay very mild throughout the year and okay. they like it hot. So right. we have some really high powered halogens out here that help produce oh that, that extra heat um, to really kind of cook them in the summer yeah it's so cool <laughs> to like hold this little one here so it's just a pretty animal and again guys I mean you know we're pretty much at ground zero for reptile habitats and diets and so on and it's just really fun to get in here and see what the people like yourself Ashley at ZooMed are all about and love the way you use your products in kind of a larger scale you know, it's not just, you know, indoor applications. You can use some of these materials like the Repti Bark. I love the way it looks. And I'm actually taking nice notes, your, your cork rounds. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm going to be bugging you guys quite a lot uh, for ideas, <laughs> for sure. Because it's, that's some of the fun about seeing how other people keep their animals. You get a lot of ideas. Sure. Um, and, you know, I really bonded with her husband, Jim. <laughs> So he's going to get a lot of phone calls and emails about building things. But anyhow, she's lovely. Does she have a name? We haven't named them. We haven't named her. So maybe you guys want to just give a nice name for this beautiful female. What shall we name her? Yep, there you go. All right, we'll put her away because she was happy to be sure. on the inside. Go ahead, kid. There she goes. She knows where to go. Yeah. Thank you. We'll see you later. All right, so truth be told, uh, you visited my place a few months ago and you said next time I'm in California you'd give me the tour and I really am excited to be in here in the Zoo Med greenhouse because if you've looked at Reptiles magazine and there was a few ads years ago that had pictures of this and now we're in it so this is a personal goal of mine and thank you so much so yeah. I can see some marginated tortoise here mm -hmm. these are great species I have three myself although I have a reverse trio I have two males to one female but um love these as a species to work with they just do yeah. so well you know yeah they're yeah. great they're relatively small so yep. they can make a really good pet even yep. if you don't have a giant giant yard. enclosure mm -hmm. gosh you got your red foots i love uh, you know the way you structure everything they've got even even in the greenhouse does it get cool enough they have to use the boxes uh for some of our more tropical species we yep. like to give that to oh, them cool. as an option in the winter time usually we'll end up taking it out um, as it warms up more, gotcha. but um, you know, they put themselves in there, so I figure they like it, yep. and so they should have it. Let them do their <laughs> thing, and it's true of redfoots are actually very, um, very smart when it comes to, to heating and cooling themselves and going in their enclosure. We have a little breeding here, the eastern boxies? Yep. Awesome, look at how pretty the easterns are, I grew up with these. Let's have a look guys, this is, this is fun, because as a boy growing up in Long Island, New York, uh, I would see the eastern box turtle um, and it's really interesting about this species because growing up in Suffolk County, Long Island, out in a small hamlet of Centromeriches, my friends, we used to have a lot of fields and a lot of wooded areas and I would always find these beautiful box turtles and look at this. I'm going to grab this one out right here yeah. just so you can kind of see just the coloration of the, this is Terrapane, Carolina, Carolina. and. I, in my opinion, I think these are some of the most beautiful box turtles. Uh, they're, they are our North American box turtles and they're beautiful. Uh, but unfortunately, like I was trying to say, as a kid, I remember catching these, sometimes two males on top of one female during the breeding season. I'd walk down this one dirt road. But unfortunately, habitat loss, you know, people built homes and stores and strip malls. 
these animals are now endangered throughout most of their range or threatened throughout most of their range. And it's really sad because this is just, look at that. Is that sick? Is that a pretty animal? So anyhow, you can really appreciate the box turtle. And this animal spends most of its life in a habitat the size of a football field. So when you build a house or two, you've really uh, done damage to their habitat. But hopefully uh, you guys will make your backyards turtle friendly. We'll put you back out on land. He looked like he was trying to get out. And uh, we still got that breeding going on, so I'm gonna go join Ashley again and see what else they have. We'll let you guys do your thing. All right, thanks, that's so cool. Man, I'm carte blanche, I get to walk in. And, and we're missing some of these aquatics too. My gosh, what, what kind of fun stuff do we have over here? Well, let's see, right here we've got reed turtles. Oh, yep. There's one. Yeah. It's, it's funny, they're, you know, the males get dark like this. Um, some people may think they're not the prettiest turtle, but uh, what they lack in coloration, they make up for in personality. They're from China and they're just a whole lot of fun and they don't get big. Right. You know, the males will get maybe a little bit bigger than this, but uh, the females tend to be the larger one. Look at her poking her head right out of the log, okay. out of the zoom head log here. Oh, watch this high dive. Boom. Yeah, see, so look at that. Wow, she's an exceptionally colorful. I don't have any females this colorful. My gosh, that's beautiful. I guess all mine are covered with algae. Yeah, they wear it like a toupee. What are you gonna do? <laughs> so cool, beautiful animal. Okay, so we have spiny necks, man. You guys have a really cool representation of a lot of different aquatics. Um, can we pull one out? Yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks, Ash. Look at this, guys. So here's a female. That is so cool. Now, this is a South American species, and look at these tubercles right here. They're soft. They feel really, they almost feel like a, a cush toy or um, like a, a pet, a chewy toy for, for a dog. It's really incredible. We don't want to encourage chewy toy <laughs> turtles, but uh, they have the, the typical side neck look, but almost like an African side neck smiley face, oh, like yeah. the, the Pili Medusas and so on. I I'm think getting they real have turtle the best nerdy. Face. <laughs> they do, they have this <laughs> smile. They're face. really cool. But now check out their habitat. Ashley, talk to us a little bit about how you have this tub set up. Because, you know, these are more forest dwellers. They like shallow water, don't they? Right, yeah. Um, okay. they, they're they found actually a lot in like cow pastures and stuff. Wow. And I've heard of them basking even, especially the babies in the hoof print that's filled with water. So they might even be just really, really small wow. areas. Wow, yeah, okay. Um, Not the strongest of swimmers, but they, you know, and that's why they've reflected that by mm -hmm. having this shallow area. Very cool. Let's go. So, you know, the other thing I love about what you're doing is, you know, you have the tub, so it has like a facility look, right? Right. But then you have a lot of live plants, and I love, you know, I love that ficus plant. What is this? This is actually a mangrove. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> what's going on here? Like, that's incredible, a mangrove in, some, in, in Central California in a waterland tub, that's incredible. We started really these cool. from seed pods that we got from a marine show, wow. and uh, yeah, I got them, they were really happy here. That's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much to look at more. We got some three-toed box turtles, but here's something that I wanna I wanna take a look at. And this happens to be one of your favorites as well, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. definitely. So what we're talking about and geeking out about here are the spiny turtles. Heosemi spinosa. Yeah. This is awesome. All right, guys. <laughs> is there any place I should and shouldn't step? I don't know. Just watch where your feet are. Just don't step on a turtle. Everyone. Yeah, don't step on a yeah. turtle. Okay, I'm gonna position myself right here and look at this. So these are adult spiny turtles. I'm gonna reach in and grab one here. And these are forest dwellers. They like shallow water. Uh, they come out and spend a lot of time on land. Now they don't look too spiny as adults because the, the juveniles will have those really uh, pronounced spines. And it could just be a little defensive thing for them. You know, if some animal were to swallow them, uh, get them in one big gulp, they probably wouldn't like the feeling of having a spiny turtle. They also look like the ninja star turtle. But anyhow, as they get older, they wear down a little bit more. But look at that plastron. Is that gorgeous? I mean, just a, a fun, personable turtle. Uh, something that I would one day I'd love to be able to create a nice habitat for them. You guys have done really fantastic, Ashley, with this. Did you see the food guy? Don't look. We got some food. So, you know, they've got a lot of cover. They've got the... The water is moving just like it would be in the stream. Uh, this is really neat. I love the cork bark. Uh, just 
A lot of area for these animals to be secretive and hide and feel secure. So you guys are hatching quite a bit of these really rare turtles and tortoises. Yeah. And you should know, fellas, ladies and gentlemen out there watching, um, you know, ZooMed, they're very passionate turtle people. Uh, and they also do a lot of uh, philanthropic work with some, you know, the Turtle and Tortoise Preservation Group and the TSA. So they're doing a lot of good work here at their facility in breeding and creating assurance colonies of these particular species. So who do we have here? This is oh, actually our first hatchling. How old is this animal? She is about four. Four years old. But look, guys, you can four? see a representation of those spines. And they're still really pronounced on this turtle but look at that and when you see a baby if you go back and watch the tsa greenhouse episode we did you'll see a baby spinosa and you can see just how spiny they are now this is a male this is a male and they get the concavity in the plastron it's almost like you know some of the land turtles right. um because these guys are semi-aquatic they're in and out of water but look at how smooth they are huh yeah he's smoothed out mm -hmm. Wow, and they got these big, long legs to help them climb over things, too. So they're truly all-terrain turtles. They can climb, and I've seen these things climb pretty high. So Yeah, they're very insane. strong. Well, congratulations on the spiny turtles. Thank you. Definitely awesome. All right, let's... Uh, climb out. Let's try not to step on everybody as we get out of here. Fly rivers, man, and these are incredible. Just industrial-sized tubs you have for them. Um, love fly rivers. It's like a freshwater sea turtle. You know? Exactly. Um, yeah. How many do you have here? We have four of them okay. um, out here, right. and yeah, they each have a 720-gallon tub, and they're they're really aggressive with one another. Yes. And oh. unfortunately, where we're at here in California, we can't really put a pond outside for them that would be large enough for them to live together. Gotcha. So. Um, so right now they're all living separately and I think they're pretty happy. Uh, they look fantastic. Really <laughs> they look really fantastic. Um, it's so much fun to watch them move about. Now here's an interesting thing is the fly rivers that are in this country originated, they were all uh, animals that were illegally smuggled. Um, and people like myself and ZooMed, you know, we work with different zoos. And so these animals are actually on loan. These right. are loan animals. These animals are not for sale. Uh, there was no money changed hands when you got these. These are right. truly just any private facility that has them is holding them uh, just to keep these animals alive. But the hopes are to reproduce these animals in captivity Absolutely. so that we don't see any more uh, poaching of them in the wild. Mm -hmm. I love them. They're just a very interesting, strange uh, turtle. See you later, dude. Oh, there's one. Let's see Ashley go. Oh snap! Yeah. <laughs> She's got no problems. All right. This is a really cool aquatic species from Southeast Asia. This is the Caliger borneensis, but actually they may have changed the genus to Batiger. Um, but this is one of my favorite riverine, large riverine turtles. Um, this is still small. This is a tiny little representation. Uh, they start out. Um, they're actually a terrapin. They're, right. they're actually laid, uh, they lay their eggs uh, in saltwater beaches. And then the babies swim upstream. They swim up through the mouth of the river and then live in a, a freshwater habitat. But it's really a, a special animal because they get massive. Okay, we're talking just huge. huge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so this species is also special because the males actually change color in the breeding season and they get really, really beautiful. Uh, they'll get a pink stripe down their nose and just uh, such a cool animal. So the Caliger borneonesis or Batiger borneonesis, uh, just a really special animal. And of course, like so many other large and small uh, turtle and tortoise species, uh, this animal is under threat of completely being wiped out because people eat turtles, they get big, all the big ones get fished out. Unfortunately, the big ones are the ones that lay the most eggs. So don't eat turtle. If you want to live a long time, eat what the turtle eats. So eat some Zoomed Aquatic Turtle Diet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's put this animal down and we're gonna get out of the greenhouse because be 
between what? 12? Between 12 and 3. We actually close the doors. No one's allowed to work in here or come in here because we want to keep it nice and quiet so the turtles can all come out and bask and feel comfortable. Some of them are really shy. Yep. And uh, basking is really, really important behaviorally for them. This um, is true. Their, step, their shell, their skin, everything. So. All right, cool. Yep. Well, we have one more animal that happens to be outside. We're going to go let these guys relax and get there. Holy smokes. <laughs> this is an amazing representation of a sulcata male. I mean, what's the story on this guy and what's his name? His name is Truman. Okay. And Truman has been with us for about 20 years. He came from a breeder in Florida and initially, originally, he actually was imported. Okay. Wow. Um, so this is interesting actually. This is a, you can no longer import sulcata tortoises. Uh, any tortoise that you get is going to be from a breeder like myself or someone else right. that has captive raised them, but they shut down the importation of those animals. So this, right. do we know where this animal came out of by any chance? Uh, he was from Mali. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, and you could just see now, sulcatas have such a large range over Africa. Uh, they go all the way from Ethiopia all the way across to West Africa along the Sahel, okay? So the southern fringe of the uh, Sahara Desert. But there is, there seems to be some characteristics or localities and you know, the, the blonder, uh, this shell is really gorgeous and Molly is definitely, you can tell uh, just those animals coming out of there have that look. I love the flaring uh, of the, the marginals in the front of him right here, like the males, bigger males, as they get older, they get this really cool flaring. And then of course the Guler projections this is a really nice enclosure too. You know, you've got multi-levels and pavers and retaining wall. This is really well thought out, especially this. Check this out, you know, so you wouldn't think about this actually, but they've made multi-level. So what I like about this is you've done the retaining wall, you've built, you've worked with the topography here, but using their heads, we don't want a tortoise to accidentally flip off and, you know, fall down. So that's a really, really smart thing to do. And I love this actually. Hmm, I'm getting <laughs> a lot of ideas out here, folks. Uh, and he's also got a water feature there as well. Yeah, so. he'll go all the way in, go swimming in there, eat the water hyacinth. He's a semi-aquatic <laughs> tortoise. Right. I mean, if I lived in the desert all the time and I saw water, I'd probably be pretty happy. So he's got an oasis here in Central California. And I just, you know, I have to say thank you so much. You've taken a lot of time out to show myself and my buddy Tom, who's just over there, um, <laughs> uh, a really great time. And thank you so much for the invite. And well, uh, thank you for coming. We've been really happy to have you. Man, this is awesome. And, and you will be getting a phone call. And Jim, <laughs> the husband, I don't know where he is, but <laughs> that dude can build some cool stuff. So I'm excited. Thanks so much, Ash. No problem. You're welcome to Camp Kennan anytime. Oh, yes. Just bring tortoise food. Okay. <laughs>